Hello and welcome to Taking Liberties episode 24 for season 4. My name is Lee, I am in Western Australia. This week we have returning from overseas, Vickers. Welcome back, yeah. Vickers. When am I not returning from overseas anymore? <laughs> Did you pick up something contagious and awful? Uh, no, just altitude sickness uh, this time because okay. I uh, decided to climb up to 4,800 meters, which okay. is the highest I've ever been. So, hey. Fun, fun times. <laughs> Um, okay, this week we're going to talk about the uh, Lachlan Macquarie slash Captain Cook statue controversy, um, and uh, we're going to talk about the Coalition for Marriages ad, so the first kind of opening salvo of uh, uh, what we're going to see with this uh, marriage uh, survey, um, and yeah, so let's let's start off yeah, with we the Lachlan... we can't call it an election, can we? It's not an election, yeah, it's not even a yeah. plebiscite, because uh, we're not voting, we're being surveyed. Um, and there was actually, well, not that we'll talk about it, I guess maybe we will talk, we could touch on it, but there was some talk about whether they're going to be applying statistical techniques to the, uh, to the survey. Uh, oh, that's, that's another thing we can talk about, I suppose, yeah. but yeah. Um, um uh, but you're, it's your show. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll start off with the, the Macquarie thing, because if, uh, if anybody actually has liked my Facebook page, uh, Aussie Liberty, uh, or has been in the, this, the, uh, a train Australian libertarian forum or society groups. They know they've been posting about this, uh, and it's elicited a lot of, uh, controversy. Uh, so yes, there's, uh, um, basically in the culture wars, the, the, the current front is whether statues should come down. So in the U S it's about Confederate statues in Australia. There's talk about whether, uh, the, uh, the, the captain cook plaque, which is on his statue in Sydney, which says that he discovered Australia is inaccurate and should be changed. Uh, or whether the Lachlan Macquarie statue, the Lachlan Macquarie was the, I think fifth governor of new South Wales, um, whether his statue should come down or the, the plaque on his thing. Uh, his statue should be changed because it says that he was the perfect gentleman, even though I would argue he he waged a war against Aboriginals. So, uh, Vickers, what are your thoughts? Since my thoughts are very strong and well considered at this point. Um, so I'm a stickler for accuracy. And from my perspective, I'm happy with the plaque being changed um, to something that's more reflective of the person. That's not to say they should be mean spirited or something, but like, I mean, things that are knowingly inaccurate. Mm. So like, for example, where it says, jo uh, sorry, James Cook yep. discovered Australia. I would possibly change the wording from that to the first European to map. Sorry. The f not yeah. even, the, he's not even the first European, but like the first, European to map the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first uh, European was the, like uh, Vlaming. I think he's a Dutch Dutch guy that yeah. went to WA. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, from the perspective that I'm a stickler for accuracy, I believe insofar as you're going to make a change, it should be that. Now, as to whether those monuments should be taken down, I don't think so. Uh, mostly because Macquarie, say what you will about the Aboriginal thing, he was he was instrumental in effectively forming the first sort of government of um, New South Wales. And that's kind of what the statue is there to signify. Um, now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I'm going to say, like, you know, I, I, I'm happy for that, that statue to stay. And not just that, um, I, would, I would go as far as to say maybe it should be more accurately worded, the plaques. Um, so yes, I do disagree with you on, you know, sure. Do you think it would be more accurate to have say chained Aboriginals at his feet? Because the statue, the pose as it is, if you, yeah. if you knew nothing about history, if you're just like walking through the park, you come across this statue and you see it and you think, what sort of person is this, is Lachlan Macquarie that he is depicted as he is. And for those who don't know what the statue is, he's sort of standing there, you know, sort of hand out. Uh, you know, it's a noble pose. It makes him look hey, noble. It's, hang on. Uh, also, where it is, right? The the statue is facing towards New South Wales Parliament House, right? That's another sure. thing. Okay. Right. So I, I I think that in that particular situation, it is appropriate for him to be in that pose facing Parliament House, right? Because it's not talking about every little thing he did. It's talking about one specific thing, right? And the objection that people have is that it says he was the perfect gentleman. And I, I'm sitting there going like, okay, fine. That's a bit of an embellishment. Uh, maybe that doesn't need to be there. 
But I'm okay with these statues being there because they are of people who are significant to New South Wales history. Um, not just New South Wales' history, but like the, the history of eastern, um, the eastern, uh, eastern states of New South. Uh, sorry, eastern states of um, Australia. Uh, I know I like to pretend New South Wales is the only country in this country. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, it's significant to the history of um, mostly the eastern side of Australia, and I think that it's fair and proper um, in that circumstance to have both of them. Um, sure. So I, I don't having. I mean, like I think having a historical, like you know, somebody with a, a a bad historical legacy doesn't just mean they should never be depicted. That's fine, as long as the depictions include the maybe not like the complete story, but the whole story. You know, and he did wage war on Aboriginals. He declared, a, you know, he took told his soldiers to take prisoners of war. He told his soldiers to shoot basically every Aboriginal male that didn't surrender. He, d- he instructed them to take the women and children as captives. He instructed them to hang up the bodies from trees. You know, like, th- this is, this is like, seriously nasty shit that is significant, you know? And, and you know, like, he essentially waged a war against people whose land they the British had stolen. So, but, like, okay, th- but does, that, does every statue have to say all of the history? I mean, like, here's the thing. It's only there to mark a specific point in history, right? Yep. Uh, so, uh, and more importantly, like the, the, uh, I'm, I'm saying, in the case of Governor, Lock- uh, in Governor Lachlan Macquarie, yep. it is quite specific to his contributions to the government of New South Wales, right? Yes, yep. fine, he did a couple of bad things. Oh, sorry, no, he did. I'm yeah, yeah, I would. Nice <laughs> but the, the point is, yes, he did some bad things, yep. but at the same time, um, he was quite instrumental to what is now the New South Wales government. I... Like, I'm just saying, based on the context, I don't think it's a particularly bad thing to have a statue of Lachlan Macquarie, right? Given his contributions to the government of New South Wales, I'm not saying. I, I, I think it's a. I think it's an interesting. Yes, people aren't perfect. They're going to do bad things here and there, and 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 you know we leave it to our better angels, I guess you could say, to determine if what they did that was bad is so significantly worse than the good that they've done that we say, hey, we shouldn't be honouring this person. That's a fine discussion to have. But in the case of Macquarie, I'm sitting there going, like, he was a pretty instrumental figure in terms of what is now the New South Wales system of government. And and I find it difficult to, like, go, okay, yes, he did bad things, but is that larger than I guess what his contribution was, and I don't think that's the case. Well, I mean, I think for for a lot of people, then when they think of Macquarie, they're not going to think of his contri- contribution to Parliament. So, like, I think one of the issues about like the the like what are you know, they going to be taught? What are they thinking? What are they thinking of? Because I was educated it, in New South Wales, sure, and that's pretty much all we know about him, right? So, like, if if there was sorry that and the Aboriginal thing, so I'm sitting there and going like. What other things did he do that he could that you could possibly talk about? Well, I mean, like, if I was really- a descendant of Aboriginals, I'd be thinking this guy hung up the bodies of those he of my ancestors that he shot, had or had his soldiers shoot. You know, I I'm thinking of the fact that you know my great 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 grandmothers were taken away as prisoners, and and the, my. You know, like, like if, if I was an Aboriginal person, I'm not going to look at Macquarie and think, oh, he's a great, he made a great contribution to Parliament. He, they're going to think this person no, no, waged no. war on no, my no, ancestors, no, no. you know, and if you're sympathetic to that cause, which I am as a libertarian, like as a libertarian, I'm going to side with those who have been attacked by the state, not the, by those who've, you know, been instrumental in the, in the workings of the state, you know, that oh, I think no, that's... He was, he was instrumental in actually having a state, right? Yes, yeah, sure. This is the, well, there I'm was a, a state I, as in the state, yeah. as in the state, as in the institution, not as in the state, as in like you know, state and federal and local. Like, I'm, that's what I mean by the state. As in, like, I'm, I'm starting with the people who are the victims of state violence. Right, yeah. right, right. But, but, but what I'm so, saying is, like, as someone who was educated in New South Wales, what we learn about Macquarie, right, as in what we're taught about him, is that he was the guy who was instrumental in taking us from a penal colony, sure. right, to, to, to one that was run by soldiers, to something that was a governed state. Yep. Right? And that's the significance of that statue. That's, a, that's the sure, significance. Of only for made. those who think that that's the significant contribution he made. So not everybody agrees with you on that. 
And so when we like, so this is why I think these sorts of things should be in museums, not in statues in parks. Certainly not by you know pri- not privately owned parks. Like if you if you owned the statue, if we put it up for auction and you you know you you ponied up the money to have that statue and you just you can put it whatever you want. So like from my perspective, privately, if people want to promote Macquarie as this great champion of democracy. That's fine. That's their choice. But like, as in terms of what the state is going to have on their property and how they're going to portray people, this this debate should be in a museum. It shouldn't be in a park. Or if you're going to have him depicted like that, have his victims, have those, have the other side depicted as well. So that's why I say to people, you know, like, would you be okay if he had shackled Aboriginal women and children at his feet? And my instinct is they're going to say no because they think he's a hero that's not just that it's about history it's that macquarie is a good guy and the story that i'm promoting and others who share my views are saying well he's not i mean i think he's not purely a villain either he's complex i'm sure maybe some of these out there who think he is purely a villain but like i think there's significant issues that, that's not just the problem with Macquarie Lane. Like, so I'm not just saying like this is purely like Macquarie's fault. Like, if you had a statue of the guy who was before Macquarie, I'd have a similar issue. Like, it's it's not William just William Bly. Yeah. Sure, anybody who's involved in the theft of Aboriginal land is got a pro- I've got a problem with because they stole land. No, like, it's no, no, it's no, a libertarian. No, like, I, I can't. I was, you know, I was just making the commentary because William Bly was the classic. You know, you know he. You know about Bly's mutiny, right? You know, he I was the, I am aware of it. Yes, but I yeah yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, just checking, just yeah. checking. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, I have some idea about it. I'm not, like, I don't know it back and front. But nevertheless, like, it, anybody who's involved in in what the the British did to Aboriginals in Australia, I'm going to have the same problem with. You know, that, that essentially the... That there's an, you know, an injustice that has been perpetrated historically on a group of people. It's never been addressed. And so any statue that unambiguously depicts somebody involved in that as a hero i'm gonna have a problem with okay so, so yeah just, that's just to say I, that it's not an issue with macquarie alone i i i'm, I'm grievously concerned right now about okay. what gets taught in um in west australia because like i'm sitting here and going like okay so this is a state monument yep right firstly so it's a, it's something that the new south wales parliament has opted to put up and not just that but it's actually a critical so when you are studying history of of, of the um, of the uh, governors of New South Wales, mm-hmm. right, and it's 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 taught to us in primary school and we're taught it again in um, high school, it, it, at least in New South Wales. I don't know about anywhere else. It's actually like a giant. It, it, it's a two term. You go over it over two terms, so it's sure. like six months. You're learning for six months about all these governors. Um, like you know, you learn about Bly. You learn about um, wow, this is really bad. Um, Bly, so there was Bly, followed by Lachlan Macquarie, and I think it was Brisbane. God, this is really right. going back. Okay, so I was don't even ask me about WA governors. I I yeah. don't think we even learn about it in school. Okay, so we do, and that's yeah. why I sit there going like, and this this was one statue that we were taken to as part of a school excursion, yeah. right? And it was like one of the many sort of statues and things, and we'd like stand there and like learn about what this, um, what the significance of this statue was. So when I hear like, oh, you know, it's not, uh, you know, th- there's a whole bunch of other things you've got to be accurate about everything in his life. I'm sitting there and going like, but that's not what the statue is there for. The statue is there to commemorate the fact that this guy took us from a penal colony and brought Parliament. That's why sure. it's facing Parliament. So there's there's a lot of it's it's not just a statue it's a piece of art that is technically celebrating a particular aspect of New South Wales history. Um, now, to, to 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 take your sort of view or point to it, it would be like the equivalent of shoving that fearless girl in front of that that the Merrill Lynch bull, right? So it's it, like I sit there and going like you you're really you're ruining something that has a historical significance to raise a point. Yes, you're right. There is a different element of yeah. uh, there's a different element to everything that Lachlan Macquarie did yep. but at the same time what we're really looking at with this statue is a significant contribution he made to the existence of New South Wales then, Parliament then if, if it's just the, the Parliament you want to emphasise then you could probably change you have a different statue that emphasised it's about Parliament it's not about him so oh, I mean okay, so like, okay I'll give you a different example say yeah. say you're teaching on the Ottoman Empire and you, you know, you, you in some way commemorate the Ottoman Empire uh, as you know, making some sort of contribution to whatever. 
if you're in a, but you don't mention the, the Armenian genocide, like in, in your depiction of the Ottomans, you ignore, you just completely gloss over the Armenian genocide. Now, if you're an Armenian, how are you going to feel about that statue? You're going to be pretty pissed because for you, the significant thing about the Ottoman Empire is that they murdered like 2 million of your ancestors and dragged them through the desert and all the that's rest a bit, of it. Wait, hang on. So, that's, a false, that's a false equivalence, right? It's not as if we don't talk about that stuff, right? We just don't talk about it with respect to this one statue. I don't think that statues or monuments or anything have to depict every single thing that occurred with respect to a single person, right? I think we can raise them in relation to specific events. We can, I mean, sitting there and arguing about how a piece of art looks and how it could look and how it could be less offensive, I don't see that as like the big deal with sorry the big sort of consideration that goes into what these things are they're meant to be symbolic and they're meant to be purely symbolic on so so well they're not meant to be purely symbolic but they are purely symbolic and they they can technically mean whatever it you know that people can take whatever meaning they want in the sense that it is subjective but at the same time yes we have plaques and stuff there that point out very specific incidences and in this particular case i think the offensive the thing that people find most offensive about it is that he said it was a per- that is that it said he was a perfect gentleman yeah and i'm inclined to agree he wasn't but the point is right that that monument is there and i remember i'm just talking back to like my personal education sure i i remember it being used to talk about the significance of going from a penal colony to actually having a standing like new south wales government yeah self-government yeah yeah so sure fine but like when you lionize the person like you said it's subjective people when people are going to think different things about that person and i don't think it's unreasonable so so part of my issue is that when you bring this when we, this topic has comes up everybody conservatives flip out and start going oh they want to kill history they want to burn libraries they want to burn books they want to erase history no we just want my issue is we want a more complete rendering of history that there's aspects to this person's legacy that when you lionize them you are overlooking you're you're uh you're actually no, uh, skipping I, over things that are, are okay. for those who are not them like for those who are not those yeah for, for people who are not andrew bolt when some they're going to think different things about like the macquarie than andrew bolt and keith windshuttle and all those other guys you know and all all the, all the libertarians have been having a go at me about burning libraries for some reason um you know like it's 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 just to say that when you depict the person instead of depicting say the event or the institution you know when it's when it's about a specific individual then their whole life is relevant in that depiction you know like unless no, it's like un- right. unless it's like actually in think of it like he's you know he didn't pay his restaurant bill once okay that's probably not significant you know like there's there's things in people's life where it's not relevant to what they did you know but we're talking about governor Lachlan Macquarie, and one of his actions as governor was waging war on Aboriginals, and and so like to, to like uh, if you want to have a monument to his contribution to Parliament, great, change the statue so it, it reflects specifically that act. Don't don't lionise the person, lionise the institution, lionise the you know which I mean there's a whole you know you get, there's a separate debate about whether you should lionise Parliament, but like if if the goal is to to make it about an event. Make it about the event. So, like, a, maybe a, a good example is there's a lot of war memorials for soldiers in war. So, like, um, I'm thinking of when I went to Korea and went to one of the, the Korean monuments they have, yeah. you know, and I think in Canada as well they have them, where they depict, like, like the, the memorial is kind of like a group of soldiers. So, if you said, okay, even if you had, like, a specific group of soldiers, like, this is the group of soldiers from this particular conflict, like this, you might say, well, yeah, but maybe those that, like, an individual soldier killed a civilian, like, maliciously. You say, well, but it's not about that one person. It's about the soldiers as, you know, it's about them as a group and it's depicting the overall role that they had or whatever. Well, that's, so that's a different thing. That's not, you know, you don't need to drag in every, every person and say, well, not every person in that regiment was a, was a saint. Okay. Well, that's, that's not relevant. What's relevant is the overall effort. Like, does that make sense? Like you can have depictions of things, which, which, so you could have it in such a way that you like you could depict his role in the in the bringing about of of parliament of you know of self government without actually saying well we're just wholeheartedly endorsing this person and i think i think for a lot of conservatives they just want to wholeheartedly endorse him like they they reject anything to do that would negatively view his history 
and they so they react in every circumstance to people criticizing, legitimately criticizing his actions. I I think there I think you're right. There is an element of that because that's pretty much what the culture wars are. Yeah. Um, but I I strongly disagree with you on this one, just because I I don't think it's I don't think someone has to be perfect in their life in order to be represented in a statue like as a state commemoration. Um, in general, I, I I don't think that's even a general rule. I would uh, even for private statues like there are private statues of Vladimir um, Lenin. Uh, Vladimir, not Vladimir. Sorry, uh, of Lenin. Yes. Yeah. Wait, he's Vladimir. Vladimir. He's Vladimir. I don't know yeah. where you're going. Oh, Come on, Vickers, I, don't know your history. You've obviously been brainwashed by all these lefties of burning books and libraries and shit. Oh wait, did you see the did you see the Pinochet um, monuments? That sorry, the Pinochet. Uh, did somebody try to assassinate him? Yeah, yeah there was yeah. there was a monument to where Pin there was an assassination attempt on Pinochet in Chile. Great, which I found interesting personally, but like yeah. at the same time, people are sitting there going like, "Hang on, that was a bad dude." Um, Pinochet so, or the assassin? Huh? Pinochet or the assassin? Pinochet. Yeah. Actually, the interesting thing is you will find um, statues of communist leaders and actually the house of Pablo Neruda, who is one of the biggest, you know, like the USSR's biggest supporter mm. in um, Chile, yeah. is, has been a national monument, has been a nationally held treasure even during Pinochet's time. Yeah. So for a guy who was a brutal dictator, he did seem to have a ironic sense of history. Sure. So, yeah. yeah, I guess we could have just, we should get Peter Phelps on to have a, a separate discussion about uh, how, how, how we should feel about Pinochet. But let, let me just ask one quick question and then we'll move on because we've only got another sort of seven or eight minutes. So, so if in that same park they had a statue to the victims of that war, of, you know, this under, more or less undeclared war by Macquarie, would you have an issue with that? If for the sake of balance we said, okay, we're going to keep the Macquarie statue because he has made this contribution to self-government, but to, to, you know, to act, sort of more fully explain this person's legacy, we're going to have a statue that is going to, you know, sh like there's going to be dedicated to the memory of those who suffered because of his, his, his actions. So, I mean, I don't want to say no, but at the same time, I, I kind of look at it, like I said, I kind of see it as the same as artistic vandalism. So um, in the sense, like, you know, with the fearless girl who was put in front of the, the bull, um, I, I think that, you know, generally a piece of art that's reflective of something and the artist has gone to make a, this is what I'm trying to say sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm talking about it like a separate statue. Like, you know, on the other side of the park facing Macquarie is like a monument to his, to the victims of his war. Oh, sure. But like, if you want to go by that, there's like, those things already exist, right? Sure. It's, it's not as if we're not taught about, you know, uh, about the, um, what was the specific event? Ah, fuck it. I'm yeah. Just, I, I, I mean, like, so, like, I, just to sort of, get, like, to the fearless girl thing, I mean, the, th the thing about the bull is, like, it's an abstract, it's essentially, it's, it's like an ideological addition to, like, an already ideological st statue. So, like, my problem with the fearless girl is it's just kind of incoherent. Like, it's, because yeah. the ideas that it represents are stupid, you know, like, and, and like, it's just a, like a knee-jerk, stupid yeah, but, thing. But that's, so, like, but that's different from saying, okay, like, we're going to depict some sort of historical monument. Like, that's a... You know, like it's it's. So there there, there are many monuments uh, to reflect uh, the the harm that was done by the original settlers against um, against Aboriginal people. Yeah. We we don't. It's not as if we don't. It's not as if we ignore that. And yes, there are elements of particularly conservative areas which do like to look at. I guess you want to say playing the culture war and trying to yeah. rewrite the narrative. Yeah. But. Having said that, it's not as if, like, from a national perspective, we do have things like the reconciliation. Um, what is it? Is it reconciliation week that occurs every yeah, year? Every year? Like yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So we've got that as from a national level that occurs. We also have loads of monuments, particularly here in Canberra. There are entire mm. suburbs and areas named after the traditional owners of the land. There's the Welcome to Country ceremony, which was invented by Ernie Dingo of all people. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, it's not as if we don't recognize it. Um, so, I, I, I would lean to say, sure, we can have lots of monuments to that. We already yeah. do. It's not a big deal. My objection would be simply if you tried to do it to, as a form of artistic vandalism against this particular statue. Sure. And I, I think I'm being reasonable on that. So. Yeah. 
No, I mean, I, I think that's a reasonable, like, I guess that's my, I was curious, like, I didn't think you would go for the, no, it can't be anywhere, uh, but I was just curious to see what you thought, because I think, yeah, there would be people out there who say, more or less, we could never, like, we should never really talk about it because it's not relevant, or somehow it isn't, like, what happened wasn't a war, or it wasn't theft of land, or it wasn't this other stuff, because apparently Aboriginal people don't have either rights or property, uh, which is just kind of weird and... Anyway, some people separate. make yeah, let's some people make really silly arguments and I yeah. I don't know. All right, well let, let's move on to the the marriage thing. Uh, we might run over a bit of time. We got a bit. Of, I got a bit of time uh, yeah. to talk. So let's uh, let's talk about the National Coalition of Marriages Act. It's the opening advertising salvo. Uh, essentially, it was a, a video of uh, I think three or four women talking about uh, more or less a slippery slope argument. You know. Uh, uh, sort of implying that if we legalize same-sex marriage, that's going to lead to all these negative harms. So uh, there was a, a woman, you know, this is all fictional stuff. I don't think any of it's tied to actual specific events saying, you know, my, my son oh, was no, told no, he no, can no. wear a skirt next year. Uh, they, insisted, they insisted they were real events. And then the prime minister of the, sorry, not the prime minister, the principal of the school and like a whole bunch of people from like, uh, who, who fact check. Actually know those people. Yeah. Yeah. Who yeah. actually know those people said, like, actually, that's a total lie. Yeah. 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 So, so, so there was a woman saying, you know, my son was told he could wear a skirt to school next year. There was a, a, th- a don't- And by the way, by the way, can I just say, uh, some of the manliest men in history have worn skirts. Yeah. Let's let me just say, uh, Julius Caesar never wore pants. <laughs> so take that into consideration. Yeah. Hell, Alexander, Alexander the Great. Yeah. The whole world in a, in, a, in effectively a skirt. Yep. Um, also, so the uh, the shovel made a very good point about men in dresses looking at uh, Catholic priests. So, I think that was probably the most savage comment I've heard so far in regards to the video. Um, yeah. So there was stuff about there was about stuff about safe schools, and there was a couple of other things where they just sort of saying, "Well, you know, if we let this happen, there we're going to get basically complete moral degeneracy uh, across the board." Um, yeah. So I'm actually in the process of writing an article taking the five best arguments from and five worst arguments from the yes and no campaigns and this is the the, the interesting thing is this ad encompasses two of the five worst arguments that i've heard for uh, sorry against same-sex marriage um and they've put it into one ad so the thing is it's a really weak ad but my favorite part about this is that this is such a weak ad it would like fuck up in any other situation Except for the fact that the Yes campaign in Australia is run by people who collectively, like I would say, if you put them all together, right, would have an IQ of about 70, (laughs) right? And and I mean that. If you took the best and brightest out of the Yes campaign, right, they'd be probably sitting at the high 70s mark, I would say, Um, just because they are so fucking stupid. Every last one of them. I've not met a single Yes campaigner today to date that I would say is an intelligent person. And I would love for someone who's listening to that go, I'm an intelligent yes campaigner. And I go, please tell me more and watch them as they slide down that scale and say something incredibly stupid. So the, uh, the response to this ad campaign has been, right? It's disgusting. It's homophobic. Yeah. It should not be allowed. To Bill play. Shorten's response was, I was just like, are you serious? You know, so yeah. I think his comment was, uh, you know, this, this is what, uh, this is on the prime minister yeah like something like that uh i sat there i sat there and watched it and went like if this is your response you deserve to fucking lose this vote right i'm sorry i'm sorry but like if if the if the no lobby wins right it'll be particularly based on bill short i'm gonna blame bill Shorten's specific reaction to this ad as the reason for why the no campaign won this is this is his comment. This is exactly what was predicted when Malcolm Turnbull decided to waste 122 million dollars on a postal survey. He gave the green light to this rubbish. This is not freedom of speech. This is freedom to hurt. I want to tell LGBTI families they are not on their own. Most people know this is total rubbish. So, so if this freedom loses, to hurt, this is not freedom short. of speech. This is freedom to hurt. Well, I mean, okay, I understand that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people with sort of uh, you know specific gender identities, and you know it's it's un, you know it's uncontroversial to say that that uh, gay and lesbian teens have much higher rates of suicide. But r- really, like if the, if this completely crap, lame, pathetic 
video is enough to tip you over the edge, then you have greater issues than this this video. Like this is anybody who has this like two brain cells to wrap together can see that this this ad is complete nonsense. No, uh, it's, no and, and like so, is, like this ad, this ad is only convincing to people who already yeah, buy into the accent, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. If you are on the fence, yep. this argument is it's not going to move you. Yep. This argument moves very specific people. Is this what we call... Um, so this is what they in the political world call a uh, energizing campaign, right? Yep. What it's meant to do is get the base out, right? It's meant to get them off their seats and go like, yes, we're really under threat. We need to help this campaign as much as we can. Yep. That's what this ad is, right? It's not yep, out no, there to change any minds, no. right? It's literally out there to energize their base. Yep. It is not... If, if you had... If your reaction had been to mock it, right? Like, I get... Like, just in my opening salvo against this ad, I said, like, yeah, some of the manliest men have worn skirts, right? Instant humor. Yeah. Disarms the ad. Yeah. Right? That's the reaction it should have been. Yeah. Right? You... The thing is, this ad is so laughable if you just mocked it. Yeah. Right? just on its pure merit, right? It wouldn't have energized the base. Yep. It'd be just like, oh my God, everybody's just laughing at our ads. Yes. I, I it's, agree. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, so, I mean, and, uh, and this is why, and this is why I think you need to sack everyone involved with that, <laughs> in, involved in the Yes campaign. Yep. Just put me in charge of it because I have more <laughs> of an idea yep. than the entire Yes campaign. Sure. No, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's being me. That's me being humble, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Because if there's one thing you're known for, because it's humility, it's, it's, yeah. Um, I mean, it, yeah, like I, I, I'm ent entirely inclined to agree with you. I think hysterical overreaction to this, like, I mean, so there is stuff out there. So I'm sure like there have been, you know, like leaving aside the possibility of false flags with any sort of instance of like posters or graffiti, which is oh, always an issue. The, the yes, um, uh, the, sorry, the, the uh, channel 10 did that. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Yeah, by, by having a photoshopped poster that said something about... Um, oh, something Stop about the, the fags. Stop the fags, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, anything like that, I kind of think... And maybe I'm just, like, in the wrong circles. Like, I, maybe I'm not in, like, the super hardcore conservative circles. But, you know, most of my friends in, in real life are conservative Christians. You know, they're people who are on the fence. They're people who, you know, like, probably going to vote no, but reluctantly. Like, they're not, like... Yeah, let's vote. Let's go stick it to the fags. Like they, I don't see any of that talk in kind of the circles I mix in. So may, again, maybe I'm like not with the skinheads or something, and I, I need to go hang out with some like more oh, high so, conservatives. Yeah, but like so, generally speaking, like I think anytime the yes campaign hits the outrage button on this kind of stuff, and you know I see it on Facebook, and you see it too with one particular Sydney libertarian slash conservative who is constantly sharing like the worst, you know, the comments off the comment section. And, and sort of uh, drawing conclusions about things. I, I mean, I just yeah. don't, I don't think it's, it's, it doesn't serve your interest. You can just ignore that stuff and argue the issue and be sensible and not My like favorite. get worked up and you're going to win the argument because most of the people I think on the conservative side are not like, they're not running to get flamethrowers to set fire to Mardi Gras. They're like, there's a reason why the, the, the banner for the Facebook, you know, profile pictures, it's okay to say no, it's because they're not, super like they're not like gunning to to be outrageously in, in against this thing they, they're reluctant to be against this thing um yeah it's also it's also telling me that their their running campaign slogan is it's okay to vote no like it's okay dude you can vote no and i'm yeah. sitting there going like really that's your most convincing argument i can think of more convincing arguments yeah. to vote no but like i mean that's the one they're running with yeah and, and, and for the yes campaign, they just say, yeah, it is okay to vote no, but here's the reasons why you shouldn't vote no. Here's the re reasons why you should vote yes. Like, you can just play it calm, play it smooth. Like, don't get hysterical. There's no need to get hysterical about this because... And I, and I think the reason it is get hysterical on both sides, this ad and the yes campaign, is because it's the culture war. It's, you know, they, they like, no, within, within kind of lefty circles being outraged at conser Christian conservatives is like their thing. They live you're, for you're, that. You're right. It is It is part of the culture war. And, and, and the thing is, the culture war has actually done something interesting. Um, so it's really... So there used to be this term, and I really think we need to bring it back. It's called fainting couch conservatism. 
right? <laughs> uh, to now, creating about couch that. conservatism for anyone who's not aware was a big thing when I was, you know, a young man at 15. It was just like we would make fun of the conservatives all the time because they would rush to be offended about something. Yeah. And as soon as they were offended, it would be like, I'm offended, so you can't say that. Yeah. Right. And we used to call that painting, painting, couch, conser- ah, painting couch conservatism. And the way the left sort of got around that was like, you know, your great comedians like your Bill Hicks and your George mm. Carl Runes, And they would just go like, that's not, hey, guys, that's not actually, you know, that's not actually an argument for me to stop saying things. That's just me going to make me make fun of you. Yeah. And, and the thing is, that's now become the libertarian ethos is that we're meant to make fun of them. Yeah. And that's why we're, we're the assholes of the world right now is... <laughs> Because we do. We, yeah. we, we make fun of the conservatives who have fainting couch conservatism and always go, oh, I'm offended. Actually, now the conservatives go, you need to apologize to me. That was a rude. That was a mean. Yeah, well, there's all this talk about bit bullying. It's like. Yeah, bullying, yeah. It's like you're bullying me. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I'm at like, like Bible study and they talk about being bullied, I'm like, you do realize that Christian conservatives like really push to keep gays in the closet, like keep it illegal for like decades. You, like you do realize that like that's actually like a thing. And it's kind of a bit shit to then turn around and say, oh, well, we're now, we're now the victims. It's like, please, please get a grip. Please get over yourselves. You do not seem to understand how stupid you sound to anybody who's not you. Yes. And, 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 and I cop a lot of flack for that because I do take the piss out of them repeatedly Yeah. after they, after they ask for that, because to be perfectly honest and, and, and for anyone who's ever asked an apology from me. <laughs> this is how retarded you sound in case you haven't realized it yet is when you say I need an apology for the fact that I'm saying my opinion is to keep someone down right and I've pointed out that you're being a bigot as a result of that yeah and you're saying like oh you've offended me I'm not really a bigot I just believe people should be second-class citizens in comparison to myself yeah right that's what I hear yeah so, yeah, it's... And, 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 you know, if you want me to make a comparison, it would be like, you know, a, a Dutch slaver going, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> yes, I've got slaves, but I'm the real victim because I've got to provide them housing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, interesting times. Anyway, we should probably uh, wrap it up there. We've been going for a little bit longer than we ordinarily would. So, uh, yes, thank you, dear listener, dear viewer, for joining us. Uh, we'll like, be back. comment, and subscribe. Yeah, like, comment, <laughs> subscribe. Uh, well, actually, speaking of culture wars, uh, there's an article out by myself uh, on the Liberty Works website. They're a Queensland do tank that they have. Uh, they've had a. They're going for kind of a lot of sort of debate type articles where they had a John Humphreys um, talking about how fractional reserve banking is a good thing, and then Darren Nelson, I think it is, he's a an Austrian sort of economist who argued Explaining against explaining how he doesn't understand credit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Or you could put it nicely and say he's arguing with the opposite point, but I agree with you. Um, <laughs> don't mention the war. Um, so yeah, I, I, I put had an article went up on Monday talking about how I think uh, Christians, uh, sorry, not Christians, uh, libertarians shouldn't be involved in the culture war. Um, and James Higgins from Rational Rise, yeah, yeah, saying that they should uh, going up uh, today. And I've, the, yeah, to be perfectly I've got honest, a response for that, which yeah. I'm trying not to avoid, not to spend like 2,200 words writing because I've got stuff to do for uni. But yes, uh, I think there's uh, more discussion to be had there. So hopefully, we'll have him on the show. Oh yeah, you you guys definitely need to smash that out. Right um, so I I'm I'm gonna publish on our own site a list that I've been working on for five best and five worst. Uh, arguments from yes and no, and I've mentioned that earlier. The reason why is because I've you, you'll notice this when I when the article goes up is that the five worst on both are the ones that you probably hear the most. Yeah. Right. And I, I there there are actually really good arguments for yes, and there are really good arguments for no. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, we don't get to discuss them because people just present the shit arguments. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, and on that. Great, great comment. Uh, We're going to wrap it up. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll be back again next week. Yep.